hello and welcome to another video in this tutorial i will be sharing how to make a round neck kimono so if this is something you would love to learn how to make you definitely want to keep on watching up to the end So to begin, I basically folded my fabric into two right sides facing and I'll be cutting out the front, the back plan first. The first thing I'll be doing is to create a border line at the top which will also serve as my shoulder line. Then from that shoulder line, I'll take my shoulder to bust measurement, shoulder to waist, shoulder to hip and shoulder to length. Having taken all those measurements, this is what we have. That is my shoulder line at the top. This is my bust line, my waist line, my hip line. And down here is the length of the garment. I do want the garment to sit right on my knee. Hence why it's long. So you can work with it in your, any length you prefer. And that last line there is hem allowance. So do ensure to add hem allowance. This is my armhole line which will be used to make the armhole later on so what i'll do is to from my center back i'm going to measure half of my shoulder and connect it to that armhole line so when my shoulder is um, 16 inches so half of that will be eight so i'm going to mark eight inches and connect it to that armhole line like this next up i'll be taking my neckline i do want a neckline that is three inches wide and 1.5 inch deep so i'm going to mark three inches wide and 1.5 inch deep for the neckline then i would make a shoulder slope just so the shoulder sits a lot nicer and more comfortable so that is the shoulder slope um and the neckline so what i'll be doing next is to mark out my quarter of my bust waist and hip measurements now do note that this is a jacket it's not fitted it's not meant to be tight or um snug so what i'll do is add 2.5 inches to a quarter of my bust 2.5 inches to a quarter of my waist and 2.5 inches to a quarter of my hip measurements so whatever my measurements are divided by four i would add 2.5 inches for that okay now do note that i'll be covering that armhole after taking my body measurements so out of that 2.5 inch that i'll be adding to my um, original body measurements divided by four i would use half inch for seam and the two inch would be for ease so my bust measurements divided by four is nine inches then plus 2.5 inches would be 11.5 okay so that's what i'll have marked on my bust then a quarter of my waist divided by two divided by a quarter of my waist plus 2.5 a quarter of my hip plus 2.5 and that is what we have marked out next out i'm going to cover out the armhole uh, so it's more realistic as opposed to what it's looking like now so i'm going to cover the armhole and this is what our back plan is looking like i'm going to cut it out and our back plan is all ready so this is what our back plan is looking like once it's cut out and next up i'll be making the front plan for this jacket so to make the front plan, I basically folded my fabric into two, same way I did for the back, um, right side facing of course. Then I'm going to place the back plan that we cut out earlier right over that folded fabric, um, fold to fold, meaning the folded edge would be placed along the folded edge. So do know that the front is just half an inch wider along that center fold. So the front is half an inch wider and I'm using half an inch because I do not want an overlap. I do not want it to be too wide apart. Hence why I'm using half an inch. But other than that, I'm going to use the back plan to cut out the neckline, the armhole, the sides and the length. Having done that, this is what the pieces are looking like i still have my front plan placed underneath the back plan then i'll be slitting that center fold for the front into two just so we have two separate pieces for the front i'm just going to slit that open like i've done and the back is one whole piece while we have two separate pieces for the front then the neckline i'll make a neckline that is four inches deep 
So do note that this was 1.5 which we used for the back. So from that shoulder line, I'm just going to measure 4 inches deep and mark it out. And that would be the depth of the front leg neckline. It's still going to be 3 inches wide, just that it's going to be deeper than the back neckline. Then I'm just going to cut out this part and depend the neckline to 4 inch. I open up the back plan and this is what it looks like is one whole piece and these are the two pieces for the front. Next up I'll be cutting the lining pieces for this garment. These are my front pieces laid out here. I do have two front pieces for my main fabric and I have two pieces of my lining fabric as well. So I do not want the lining to show along that neckline and along that center front um center front of the garment so what i'll do is i'll reduce the lining and replace it with fabric so what that means um, i'm going to measure two inches along the neckline and two inches down that center front line of each lining so you know we have two lining pieces for the two um, front pieces so what I did I from that neckline I measured two inch inwards then from that center front line I measured two inch inward for both lining pieces so what I'll do next is to cut out this um, max area and trace it out on my main fabric now do note the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the lining to expose or the lining parts to show from the jacket hence why I'm cutting this out and replacing it with fabric just take um, take your time to look at what I'm doing and I'm sure you understand it better so this is it after cutting it out i did place it on my fabric and add half an inch all the way around the top the neckline and both sides just so that when i reattach that fabric to the lining it's not it doesn't come out too short so you want to ensure to add enough allowance all the way around that lining piece so this lining piece i won't be using i'm going to stitch that main fabric that we just cut out um that Ankara fabric I just cut out, I will stitch it to this lining piece. So do know that I have two lining pieces and two fabric pieces. So I'll be stitching one fabric to one lining and one fabric to the other lining. So this is what our lining piece would look like when it is all sewn. For the back, I'm going to repeat the same thing. I'm just going to mark two inches along the neckline. For the back, I'm not taking it down the center back because the back is going to be closed. So I'm just going to do it only on the neckline, 2 inches around the neckline and cut it out. So 2 inches from the shoulder, 2 inches on the neckline and curve it out and replace it with fabric. Ensuring that I add enough allowance to the fabric before cutting it out on the main fabric. Now if you do not add enough allowance... You would end up having the lining looking shorter so this is two inch marked all the way around the neckline then i'm going to cut it out then use that small piece to cut out the fabric with like this ensuring to add enough allowance so when i attach if i have excess of the material i can easily trim it out as opposed to having it looking shorter okay so i'm going to sew this to the lining the bigger part of the lining to this um small ankara fabric here so when i attach all these two pieces together this um piece will be what i'll be using to line the back completely so this is what the lining pieces look like you can see that i stitched on the ankara fabric to the lining so this is what my line this whole piece here is my lining okay so this is what we have for the lining i did iron it out these are the two front pieces and what I'll be doing is to attach it to the main fabric. And this is the back. This is what the back is looking like. I'll be using this to turn the back of the garment while I'll be using the front lining pieces to turn the front of the garment. Now to turn it, I have my main fabric placed right sides facing me. I'm right sides upward. So what I'm going to do next is to place the lining pieces onto each uh fabric right sides facing so the fabric and the lining are facing right sides as you can see they are placed right sides facing 
and I placed it in a way that they are equal at the hem but the lining tends to be shorter at the top and that is because we'll be using the lining to turn the hem of the garment now to do this after placing the right size facing I'm just going to sew the bottom part by half an inch on both sides so I'll be sewing both pieces together by half an inch so I'm going to sew the right part of the garment and the left part of the garment half an inch on the bottom of the garment so um before showing you guys how to turn the hem to the right side now you can see that the line the lining has been stitched at the bottom so what i'll do next since the lining is shorter than the main fabric which is supposed to be since we are hemming using the lining to turn the hem i would you can see this part is shorter so i'm going to pull this lining piece upwards to meet up with the uh, main fabric so I'm just going to pull it upwards to align with the neckline of the main fabric like this then I would um, stitch the neckline the side and the center front so when you pull up you can see that that hem allowance that was at the bottom is now turned inwards towards the direction of the lining so I'm just going to stitch this um, center front upwards up to the neckline and I repeat the same thing on this side of the garment before turning it right side. So what this does, it helps to conceal all the seams inside this um, lining and the main fabric. So the seams and the rough edges are not really visible. So I'm just going to stitch the neckline, the side and this is what it looks like when it is turned out after stitching i turned it out from the armhole this is what it looks looks like uh you can see the neckline is um really swell sewn i did stop stitch the armhole because i'll be attaching the sleeve to the armhole but if you're doing like a sleeveless garment you would want to turn in the armhole as well so this is what we're looking like at this point it's really nice really neat this is what the front plan looks like when placed side by side i'm really loving how this um project is coming on and when i turn it over i'll show you guys the wrong side of the front plan so this is what the wrong side looks like you can see that it's all neat and tidy as you can see it's well ironed well sewn well pressed well stitched so this is how neat it it came out as you can see really looking this is good construction right here and i'll do the same thing for the back as well so i'm just going to repeat the same process on the back um stitch on the lining um turn over the neckline um and turn it right sides through the armhole and this is what the back looks like you can see i turned the hem as well basically the same way i did for the front and i turned the neckline but the shoulder and the armhole is exposed because i'll be um, joining the shoulders together then i will go ahead and join the sides together by one inch after joining the shoulders i'm going to join the hem all the way to that bust area and do the same thing on the other side so this is it after joining the shoulders and joining the sides you can see it's already coming together this is what the inside looks like really neat really tidy um so next up i'll be attaching the sleeves uh i didn't opt for a dramatic sleeve i decided to go with a basic peplum sleeve I did not really record the video on how to cut the sleeve or how to couple the sleeve pieces together because it's a basic peplum sleeve. So if you do want to see a detailed video on how I cut a peplum sleeve, a three quarter peplum sleeve, um, do let me know. These are the sleeve piece. The these are both sleeves um, placed side by side. They are fully lined, by the way. Um, so i'm just going to go overlock the joining for the peplum and the sleeve um along that line i would overlock it before attaching it to the bodies of the main garment but yeah this is what the sleeves look like basic peplum sleeves so after attaching the sleeves to the garment 
this is what it looks like it's really cute really chic elegant you know really classy vibes and i love 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 how this garment came out and uh let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you did learn something or enjoyed the video do let me know in the comment section and leave a thumbs up uh like this video and share do not forget to subscribe you guys uh subscribe to join the family and if there are any type of videos you would want me to do do let me know in the comment section as well and yeah this is how this project came out and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you in another video